Hello friends, in today's video I have 20 new Zoom game ideas for adults. No kids allowed on this video. If we're meeting for the first time, hi, my name is Sean. On this channel, I create fun ideas to help you grow closer to your friends and your family. We could all use a little more fun in our life. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Is this my con? Is this my con? <laughs> all right, let's hop into the first game idea. The first game idea I have for you is called Zombie Apocalypse. 2020 kind of feels like zombie apocalypse or aliens have taken over the world or we're living in another dimension. <laughs> kind of been a strange year, right? The Zoom host is going to choose five random objects. Bring those objects to your Zoom meeting and you're going to give the other players, the other people on your Zoom call, a scenario like zombie apocalypse. Players then have to name which of the five items that you brought would be most useful in a zombie apocalypse. And they also have to share why they think it would be most useful. Now, other scenarios that you could have for this game are like, Bigfoot gets on a city bus. You're going to a family reunion where you don't like anybody. Or you're surrounded by sharks on an itty bitty boat. Make up a scenario. I'm sure you all are very creative people. The next game is called Two Truths and a Lie. The night before your Zoom meeting, gather two truths and one lie from all the people that are going to be on the meeting. Now they don't have to let you know which things are the truths and which is the lie. It could be a mystery to you as well as the host, but make sure that you have two truths and a lie from every player that's gonna be on your Zoom call. Now these should be silly things. They don't have to be work related. It could be something about your personal life that nobody else would know about. Then once you are on your Zoom call, you will read each of the players, two truths and a lie, and everybody in the group will decide which one is the lie. You could have them write in the chat which of these statements is the lie, and whoever guesses it correctly, it gets a point. So you do this for every player on the call, and whoever has the most points after everybody has shared their two truths and a lie is the winner. Right now, I'm gonna give you two truths and a lie, and you let me know in the comment section which one is the lie. One, I have a cat named Fluffy. Two, I have eaten monkey brains in Africa. And three, I went zip lining in New Zealand. Let me know which one's the lie down below. If you guess correctly, I will give you a gold star. Game number two is where are you? Tell your Zoom participants ahead of your Zoom call to come prepared with a picture already loaded into their virtual background settings on Zoom. And the picture needs to be of some place in their current city. It could be a famous place, it could be a local place, restaurant, uh, nature thing, something a little bit recognizable, not too hard, but hard enough to guess what it is. This is a great game if you are playing with people that you don't know very well and people who are all around the country or the world. Then when you're on your Zoom call, ask one person to change their background to their city image. And then everybody will put their responses in the chat of where that city is or what that specific spot in their city is. And whoever guesses correctly gets a point. And you go through all the players on your call and whoever has guessed the most cities or virtual backgrounds correctly and has the most points wins the game. The next game is called Personal Scavenger Hunt. Now we are all familiar with scavenger hunts on Zoom. I've posted quite a few on my channel, but this one has a little bit of a different twist. The Zoom host will call out descriptors of people and the people on the call, all the players on the call, then have to work together to find the person who fits the descriptor. Now the person who fits the descriptor needs to stay silent and see if the other players can guess that they fit that description. All right, I'm gonna give you an example. The youngest person. 
probably nobody knows who the youngest person in the group is, so they have to work together to figure out who that person is. You could say green eyes. Now this one would be a little easier because you have a camera and you could see who has green eyes. Whoever has the green eyes should remain silent until they have been identified. And you may have more than one person fit the, these descriptions. This is just a great game to get people to know one another and see commonalities. The next game is called Hot Seat. Ooh, 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 hot seat. I don't know. So ahead of your Zoom meeting, everybody submits a question. Now they don't know who is gonna be asked these questions, so they just submit a random random question, like how many siblings do you have? Or do you like white wine or red wine? Have you ever fallen out of your chair? <laughs> Then the Zoom host, when the Zoom call begins, will pick one person at random and they have to be in the hot seat. Hot seat, ooh, ooh, hot. And the Zoom host will then ask them all of the questions from the other players. This game, of course, is great as an icebreaker. The next game is called Would You Rather. Now you can find, you can search the internet, the interwebs, Pinterest in search of some adult would you rather prompts. But if you're looking for silly prompts. I have some over on my website. I have a Halloween themed one. I have a quarantine themed would you rather uh, that you can simply take these as little videos or individual slides, plug them into a PowerPoint or Google Slides, screen share them with the players on your call so that you don't have to come up with the questions yourself. But basically would you rather is you have a prompt and, and players have a choice of this or that and they have to decide which one they would do and then discuss why they would choose the difference. I'm gonna pop up a couple of slides from my would you rathers on my website that I will link in the description box down below if you are interested in purchasing this. The next idea is to have a trivia night. Now you can create your own silly one. I recently did a trivia night with college buddies that I got together. It was so much fun. And I created trivia questions around our college that we went to and many of us hadn't talked in years or since we graduated from college. And it was just random facts about our college, the college buildings, professors. Well, Trivia Maker, I've talked about them before. They have sponsored one video of mine, but this one is not sponsored. They have no clue that I'm still talking about them because I love them. <laughs> but you can create your own trivia based around maybe your company you could ask you know questions you could have trivia based on something all of your players have in common you could do like halloween trivia but it's just a really fun way to screen share and it's all set up for you just to make up your own questions and then it's super easy to share you can add music and it's, it's just a lot of fun. Do you like to play card games and games with spoons? Yes, I said spoons. <laughs> Extreme spoons is so much fun. Oh my goodness. Every player will need their own deck of cards and a spoon. Each player shuffles their own deck and deals themselves four cards. Now the goal is to get a four of a kind in your hand. When the game begins, players should take the top card from their own deck and either keep or discard it. If they keep it, they should discard a different card so only four remain in their hand. Now players continue in this manner until they have a four of a kind. Then they take the spoon next to them hold it up to their nose so other players can see it via video chat. And as soon as someone gets a four of a kind or notices someone else holding a spoon, they should grab their spoons. The last person to grab a spoon receives a letter in the word spoon, S-P-O-O-N. The first person to spell spoon is the Boggle, yes, Boggle. I put Boggle on here because what adult doesn't love a good word game? And a lot of people have Boggle at home, but really only one person on your Zoom call needs to have Boggle, but they will need a special setup using canned goods and a box of macaroni or pasta. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, that sounds ridiculous. I'm gonna link you to another video, I'll post it right here, that shows you how to set up a secondary camera where I use my phone so that I have an overview shot of the boggle board so that everybody can see when it shakes and it's just a lot easier to see the game pieces. But boggle is super easy and super fun. Everybody loves boggle. The next game is called Can You Name It? Again, another game if you love word games, love challenging word games. Over on my website, I've already put this game together and you can just simply screen share it with everybody. But basically it's words that have the word can, C-A-N, in it. <laughs> Who likes mystery and intrigue and guessing games? This one's called Wink Assassin. Yes, wink, wink, wink. And here's how you play it. Wink Assassin is a game of guessing and acting. Put on your actor's hat. You don't need anything to play this game. Players must convince all the other players that they are not the assassin. One player is the assassin and must finish off the other players before getting caught and identified as the assassin. The assassin privately messages the victim a wink emoji. When a user gets this message, they must tragically die on screen and then turn off their video feed on the Zoom call. The players then vote who they believe the assassin is. So take turns, the assassin will continuously pick someone that they will message and after every death, then all the other players and then vote. The player with the most votes gets kicked off. The game continues until the assassin is caught. This next game is going to require a bit of instructions and some prep before you jump on your Zoom call. It's called a desk photo contest. This is really great for groups that are having meetings, like your company meeting is on Zoom. Before everybody jumps on the Zoom call, instruct all players, all participants, to take a flat lay of their current office desk workspace. Now, how you take a flat lay, it's super easy, is you just stand above, <laughs> be careful. You could climb a ladder. I like to stand in my desk chair. <laughs> And you just want to take your phone and hold it even over the top of your desk so that it's completely flat and you get a shot of all of your desk. Then everybody will share their pictures through screen share on Zoom and everybody will vote on whose picture is the best. Or you could say whose picture is the messiest, whose desk is the neatest, whose desk is the most unique. Hey, you could even award trophies for this game. All right, this next game, I can't play because I don't have any. <laughs> I know, I, I feel like I'm one of the few people who doesn't have one of these. Okay, what am I talking about? I'm talking about tattoos. This game is called Tattoos and Stories. Players will share a story about their tattoo and the other players have to guess whether that story is the truth or a lie. <laughs> You can take points with this game. So players that guess it correctly, whether the tattoo is a truth or a lie, if they guess that correctly, then they give themselves a point and you go through everybody and shares tattoos. Now, if you don't have a tattoo like me, maybe you share a story about a scar on you. Most people have scars. Award points to those who get the, uh, who guess that it's the truth or a lie correctly. So you might have multiple people getting points at the same time. Then whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. The next game is called Never Have I Ever. If you have, then you get a point. So it goes like this. Never have I ever eaten alligator. Now, if you have eaten alligator before, then you get a point. Yes, this works on the honor system. Everybody's gonna have to keep track of their own points. So if you have eaten alligator, give yourself a point. Then somebody else would go next. Never have I ever smoked pot. I know, I told you. I told you this was an adult video. I would not get a point because I have never done that. But if you have done that, give yourself a point. So you get the idea. You can make the never have I ever's as family friendly as you want or not family friendly at all. And whoever has the most points by the time you get around all the players wins the game. The next game is the lip sync challenge. And I'm doing a little shoulder shimmy shimmy shake because music is involved. Before the Zoom meeting, ask all of your participants, all of your players to record themselves 
singing along to the chorus of a song and dancing along as they sing, lip syncing. Then when everybody jumps on the call, take turns sharing the video and everybody will vote on which video is the best and that person is the winner. For this next game, every player is going to need a deck of cards. Who doesn't have a deck of cards? Everybody has a deck of cards laying around, at least one deck at my house. I'm sure we have five or six and they probably have like unicorns and princesses and kitties all over them. I played this game as a kid. <laughs> War. You guys remember playing this game? Everybody was like, quickly you go through your card and slap down a card and whoever had the highest card then got to keep both cards and then if you put down the same card at the same time then you'd have to battle it out with three cards flip over the fourth card and whoever won whoever had the highest card you get all the cards until someone runs out of the deck of their cards oh i used to play this for hours and hours so i thought this is a great game to play on zoom with a little tweak Every player will flip the top card and show it towards the camera. The player with the highest card gets a point. If there are matching cards with the same value, say you put two kings down, then the two people flip again, and the highest card value wins the point. Go through your entire deck of cards, and once you're at the end of your deck, everybody should have the same number of cards, <laughs> then you see how many points you have, and that person is the winner. The next game is called Drop a Hint. Now I found this game on Party Play Plan, Play Party Plan, Play, I can't ever remember the name of the website. I will link it down below. She has great ideas over on her website that has to do with party games. I love her website, so I'll link it down below. But I thought one of her games that she had listed, this one called Drop a Hint, would work great on Zoom. The object of this game is one person guesses while the other three people work together to get their teammate to guess a word. Each person saying one word at a time. So you're going to divide your players into teams of three or four people, depending on how many people are on the, on the call. While one team plays, the other teams will just watch. The Zoom host will give the word of an object like castle to all the players on the team except one person, and that person is going to be the guesser. The guesser then has the, to guess the word castle only by the, wor the one word that the other team mates provide. So for example, say the first team player says tower. The guesser is like, okay, tower. I mean, that could be like the Eiffel Tower, that could be Legos. I mean, you could guess a bunch of things. Okay, so they, they haven't guessed castle yet. The next teammate says princess. Okay, so then the guesser goes, okay, tower, princess, uh, Rapunzel. Um, no, that's not right. So then the third teammate says building. Okay, so then they say castle. The guesser says castle and they get it correct. So then you would go to the next team and the Zoom host would provide a word for that team. You can play as many rounds as you want, but the team with the most points at the end of the game wins. We are down to the last two games. I hope you've been enjoying this video. If so, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up because it helps my channel out so much. Thank you. This game, number 19, is called Odd One Out. Before your Zoom call, create 10 to 12 lists of common things, but that have one, one thing on the list that doesn't belong. Show your first list using screen share. Then players race to type in the chat which item is the odd one out? Here is an example. All right, the final game you are going to need some kind of music playing device. You could use your phone. You could go ahead and have some music preloaded on your desktop to share on Zoom. Yes, you can share music on Zoom, or you could just play it off your phone and your, your laptop speakers will pick it out. You're going to need to get your Groove on, no, mm -mm. That's, that's not it. You're going to need to get in the party spirit to play this classic game. Name that tune. Play a brief five to 10 seconds of a song and the first player to type in the chat the title of the song and the artist name wins the game. I am never good at this game, never good. I hardly ever remember title or artist name but I'm sure some of you out there would rock this. 
please consider subscribing to my channel if you want more games like this. I post every week and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Ooh, ooh, ooh.